Welcome to Prevail's Compliance Corner. It's Orly from Prevail, back with my uh, Batman and Robin routine with Noelle Vestal. How are you doing, Noelle? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. I missed you last week. I missed you too. It's been too long. It's been too long. Um, so, you know, last week we talked about uh, Prevail uh, versus GCC High. Today we're going to talk all about CRM or Customer responsibility matrix. I'm sure that's one of your favorite topics. It's riveting stuff, guys. Very it exciting. It is, you know, <laughs> right up there with whatever soap opera you're watching. It used to be days of my life, days of your life. Not days, days of our life. Days of your life back when I was a teenager. <laughs> All right. Let, let's get this, let's get this party started, as they say in pink. All right. Why don't we start this off and have a really kind of sensible first question here. You know, what is a CRM? What is its role in CMMC compliance? Yeah, it's it's actually pretty straightforward. A CRM, and, and that, that acronym is used for a bunch of other stuff too. So don't be surprised if you're confused and thinking it's something right. else. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that acronym. Want to tell us what else it could stand for? Uh, there's also... Uh, oh gosh, now of course now I can't think of any of them. Okay, just <laughs> really just lied to us. There's no such thing I as did, CRM right? for anything else other than customer responsibility. Matrix. You're right. It's All right. Just that. So CRM is a customer responsibility matrix, and the role of it is exactly what it sounds like. What is the customer's responsibility versus what a vendor's responsibility is? So if you for, like, for example, if you let's take a customer responsibility matrix and um, the way that you would have it if you went to go get your brakes fixed. Would your responsibility be to change your brakes? Probably not. That's probably, I mean, maybe it is, but I doubt it highly that if you take it to a mechanic, they're going to say, you know what, you need to change your own brakes. Thanks. But your customer responsibility, your responsibility as the customer would be to pay, to explain what the problem was, to make sure that you, know, you could validate that everything was okay and that sort of thing. So that's kind of very generic understanding. Of explanation. Yeah, very generic explanation, but makes sense. Right. All right. And so its role is to, to explain what is your responsibility. So what needs to be in your CRM? You know, what do you have to have there in order for it to be validated? And I guess also, you know, who's going to check this? This is a great question. So um, th if you get an auditor assessment, there are some auditors or assessors who will ask to see your customer responsibility matrix. So I think we need to call them assessors. We're having this yes, I'm sorry. Kind of 1984 Assess moment. I am saying auditors or assessors because you could get an audit from someone else that wasn't necessarily a CMMC related one, but you're right. Um, for CMMC, it would be an assessor for everything else that's considered an auditor. So if you have an auditor or an assessor, or basically anybody coming to uh, review what you're doing internally, a lot of them will ask you to see a CRM if you have um, some vendor that you have a, a responsibility with. They will like to see that just to sort of get the breakdown and make sure that you're actually addressing your responsibilities and also that the vendor is as well. It doesn't always, it, it's not like it's a requirement exactly. Nobody is going to say you have to have this if you don't have one, you fail. But a lot of assessors and auditors do actually look for that. So what needs to be on it is essentially whatever you're getting assessed or audited for, you need to have the practice area. Like let's take NIST as an example. You have the practice area or, you know, the family, if you will. So like access control or audit and accountability, configuration management, etc. And you'd have the, the actual practice itself, you know, 3.1.1, 3.2.1, whatever. And then it would say, this is the responsibility. This particular practice, it would say, you know, customer responsibility. Or for 3.1.1, it would say it is the vendor's responsibility. Or it would say for 3.1.1, it's everybody's responsibility. We're sharing this responsibility. Everybody it's has no one's responsibility. It's no one's responsibility. Right. So here's the interesting thing too that you have to remember is that you also want to have a really good explanation of what those responsibilities would be. So like you just said, if it's everybody's responsibility, then it's nobody's. Well, you need to sort of have like a delineation saying, okay, no, there is, this is what the vendor is going to do. This is what the customer is, is going to do, or that this is what they're responsible for, not necessarily what they're going to do. So having a little bit of understanding of that is a good thing. Right. And so, um, might there be overlapping responsibilities? Like uh, if, you're, if your vendor says, uh, we can take care of this, but some parts of it, your organization needs to take care of. How do you, how do you um, kind of take care of that? How do you? Well, it, it, honestly, there's no hard, fast rules on CRMs, really on how they sort of break that down. 
I mean, it can be very, very in depth where it's, okay, listen, this is the exact things that you are going to do in this shared responsibility. Here's the exact things that we're going to do. Or yes, it is our responsibility as the vendor. However, this is with the understanding that you're going to do X, Y, Z to make sure that we can do our part. So it, it just kind of depends. You can um, you can state it as sort of an assumption at the beginning that there are these certain things that, you know, as the vendor, we are not responsible for, you will be responsible for as the customer. Everything else is with that assumption. You can do it that way. You can break it down individually, column, column for column. Okay, on 3.1.1, here is what the vendor is responsible for. Here is what the customer is responsible for. Here is where those two things overlap. You, you right. can go super in depth or not very much. And I've seen, I've seen it all kinds of different ways. So it just depends on the vendor you're working with. Okay, right. But uh, it probably makes sense to have a very clear delineation rather than any confusion. Yeah. seems like if you, it's not clearly del delineated, then hmm, how can they get that get done? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely helps to have the understanding of, of what your vendor is going to support and what they're not going to support. You know, if some, if, if a vendor is saying, I'm not going to do this, that does mean it falls on you. So you definitely want to be sure that you're paying very, very close attention, especially to those, we're not doing this ones. Right. Definitely want to make sure to get on top of those. Yeah. I think uh, one thing that might help people kind of get their hands about this, around this, right? And the end is, you know, why don't we just like take an example and you know know what to look for. Um, right. So let's just take an example. Throw this on the screen. So this is an example customer responsibility make matrix, and it gives the various practice areas of access control or audit and accountability, configure right. information management. Why don't you tell us um, a little bit about this? this? Is of course very high level. Um, you know we have to have all these uh, all these statements that do not try this. Uh, yourself at home. This is meant for example purposes only. Any similarities to responsibility <laughs> matrices alive or dead is purely coincidental. Purely coincidental. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, this is very, very high level. Just an example. I mean, again, this is super, super pared down and just, okay, the first one is practice area and CMMC practice. We did it based on CMMC. So ACL1 3.1.1, which in this case with our imaginary vendor is a customer responsibility and it states the customer will ensure that all system access is limited to authorized users and processes on behalf of the users with policies, procedures, and systems user access management. So it's on the customer to make sure that that system access is limited. Then the next one is audit and accountability. That ends up being the vendor responsibility for this particular practice 3.3.2. The vendor will provide audit logs that allow for actions of individual system users to be uniquely traced to those users. So like as an example in Prevail, we have audit logs that trace every single action to every individual user. So that would be a situation where that is not the customer's responsibility to create those audit logs. That is the vendor's responsibility. And then a configuration management, this is a shared responsibility. So this one says a customer will work with vendors to establish and maintain baseline configurations and inventory of organizational systems. So this could be a situation where you have an MSP or, you know, or, or some sort of other, you know, um, individual vendor who's helping you out who said, okay, great, I'm going to help you build an image for all of your machines so that you know that there's going to be a baseline configuration, but then it's the customer's responsibility to apply that image to every machine. And that would be an example of a shared responsibility. Got it. Are there any gotchas when you're building one of these things, like red flags, things to look out for, uh, like red buttons not to touch, or I shouldn't say red buttons, but like hot burners to you know, not touch? I, I think one of the things probably a good, just, you know, it's it's one of those things with, with anything that you're buying. If you end up with a customer responsibility matrix that seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you have someone who's telling you that they're going to do every single thing and you're going to just have the greatest experience and you're not going to have to worry about any of this stuff and your audit's going to come through. If people are telling you that, it's probably not true. So right. um, that, would, that would definitely be my big sort of, you know, that's like a red flag for me if you end up with a vendor who's sort of selling you like the moon and the stars, that's uh, no one can give you an easy button, if you will, for compliance. You know, there are people who make it certainly easier, definitely. But if somebody comes in and says, oh yeah, we're going to take care of all of this, all 110 of these NIST controls, all 110 of these CMMC, you know, level two, version two, we've got you. It's no problem. You don't have to do anything. There is always going to be customer responsibility. That's why it's called a customer responsibility matrix. 
and not a vendor responsibility matrix because right. the customer will always have something you have to do. And on every one of these controls, there's going to be something that you probably have to do, even if it's just documenting a policy that states you're doing whatever you're doing, but you are going to have to do something. Level of effort varies, but you are going to have to do something. So I would definitely say buyer beware on anybody who's trying to sell you something. There's a Latin term for that. They call it caveat emptor. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. It's fancy. There you go. Um, all right. We would be remiss, though, if we didn't finish, round out this conversation by just talk, mentioning Prevail does have a customer responsibility matrix. If you buy Prevail, it tells you what Prevail is responsible for in terms of securing CUI, and it tells you what the customer is available for, uh, is responsible for. Um, so reach out to us if you wanted to talk about customer responsibilities anymore, particularly reach out to that Check Noel. She'll have a much better conversation. I'll be funnier. She'll be more <laughs> Very true. Very true. All right. All and then right. also we have the 15 minutes uh, that you can you can sign up for to talk with me if you'd like as well. Are we going to put that in the show notes? We're going to put that in the show notes. We're going to put that in the show notes. All right. So I start off by saying we're Batman and Robin. I'm Batman and you're Robin? I can totally be Robin. I have no problem with being the Robin to your Batman, Orly. It's not right. bothering me at all. We're both, since we're both ladies, we need to find like some feminine trope. All right. For next show. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.